last time we saw you, you were, you were uh, pretty bearish, I should say, on the economy. You think a recession is, is quite likely. Um, how, what's your, how's your thinking evolved on that and on the markets? Do you think now that we're down almost 20 percent here, you're seeing signs of any turnaround? Uh, not in the near future. You know, I'm, I'm not even sure we could see the bottom at this point. You know, it's, an, it's what they call an exogenous shock, a so-called black swan coming from the medical community. The impact, ultimate impact on U.S. economic growth, global economic growth, and certainly corporate earnings are unknown at this time, which explains a lot of the volatility in the market today. But again, I don't, I don't think we've seen the bottom nor can we even see the bottom at this point. It's coming from the medical community, and even they are unsure of the magnitude and, and breadth and depth uh, of this crisis. So I would definitely keep your powder dry. Uh, don't panic sell, of course, at this time. That never pays uh, when you have these types of situations. But it's definitely going to get worse before it gets better. Would you change your mind, Rich, if we do get an announcement maybe after the close today, maybe hints are dribbled out to the press, maybe a big announcement tomorrow. The White House says, boom, this is our plan, payroll tax cut, you know, loan relief to biz uh, loans from businesses, relief for those who are hard hit, hourly workers and so forth. Would that change your mind? Uh, that'll help, certainly. I don't know that it would change my mind. It would stick to your overall longer term plan. Don't panic sell. The, the fact of the matter is that the economic growth this year was predicated on on two key pillars. That is, the consumer being strong, which has propped us up most of the last 10 years, uh, and, and corporate earnings would have come through because last year was all about P.E. expansion. Mm -hmm. And neither of those things are going to be there in the near future. Economic growth in the U.S. is likely to be uh, in recession or close to it. All right. And, and so it's not going to change anything substantially. OK, fiscal or otherwise. Jim, let me bring you in then. You, uh you look at parts of the market that have been the winners and say you can kind of still lean on those names like the Microsofts, like the MasterCard, right? I think we have no idea where exactly the bottom is, but you have to get involved in steps. And it's not easy, but you have to do a little bit now, a little bit in a couple of weeks, and you say, where am I going to be safe? Where do I know that my capital is going to work over two, three, four years? And companies like Microsoft or companies like MasterCard are going to be around. You're still going to be using Microsoft Office. You're still going to be use, using MasterCard-backed uh, cards, and they will be around. I don't think you can go to places where there's a lot of debt or where the industry may be uh, having secular change permanently. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. So if, those are the, if you favor, let's say, the winners uh, of this bull market, then you would avoid companies with high debt loads, obviously, in a time like this. And we've seen those ones are the hardest hit. But you're not necessarily looking for value plays, it sounds to me, in energy or anything uh, like that with a secular challenge. What about financials? What about banks? We don't do a whole lot in the banking sector. I, I, with a zero interest rate world, if that's where we're going to, I think it's going to be harder for banks to make money. I'd say, why do you have to go there? Why do you have to take on that risk? Uh, with all the quality growth on sale, you don't have to. And, and it's a great stock picker's market right now. All right. Jamie Cox is also joining the conversation. He's the managing partner at Harris Financial Group. Uh, Jamie, so we've heard from Rich, who's a little bit more uh, bearish on the economy and the markets. Jim may be kind of tactically buying here. What would you, what's your advice uh, to investors? I think investors are learning the hard way about, you know, what, what companies they own. We're starting to see a lot of dividend cuts in, in the oil patch all of a sudden. So I think investors are, are going to get a good lesson on why you need to understand what you own when you buy something. Like if you own companies in oil just for the dividend, you're getting, a, a, you're getting, you're getting, your, uh, you're getting your money handed to you right now. So I think there's a lot of that that investors could take away when they actually make their decisions to buy in the future. In addition to that, I'm with, I'm with the people who want to buy right now with these growth companies. I mean, I think Microsoft, MasterCard, I think all of these places are great companies that we loved two months ago at much higher prices. And if you have any money on the sidelines or if you've got bond holdings that you'd like to reallocate, you've got plenty of options on the table. And I think people should be doing that right now because as soon as clarity comes back, it may be too late to pick these, these good mm -hmm. deals up. Rich, you want to respond to that? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, I would say resist the temptation, obviously, to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. But uh, wh where are you going to go at this point? Are you going to go into bonds, VIX, gold, uh, the Japanese yen, the Swiss franc, or They're utilities? Go into These big well tech. Run. What about yeah. Fang? Uh, again, I'd say too early. I'm now, if you have if you have money on the sidelines and you have a longer term horizon, I would agree. You know, over a three five year period, you're probably going to see gains, but. For most investors right now, if you're already holding the stocks, plowing more money into the stock market right now is a little too early. I'd wait until some of the 
uh, some of this exogenous variable clarifies itself before you go jumping into the deep end of the pool. Jim Tierney, why not wait? I mean, is, do you feel like there's some urgency right now with the, the dislocations we've had in some of these names? I, I think when you can buy some of these great franchises down 20 or 25 percent, you have the Fed on your side, you probably have the administration on your side, and you have time on your side. At some point, the number of cases is going to go down, and the market's going to lift, and it's, whether it's a 5 or 10 or 15 percent lift, and we're going to say right back where we were in 2018 in the fourth quarter, why didn't I jump in in December? Now's your chance. Let's